we have four different types of arthropods that we study here in the Arthropod Museum. This one looks different from the first one, right? This is a different... Our outreach program consists of us going out around the state, primarily around southern New Mexico. We will go out to schools and we also have schools come here to visit and we give them tours of the museum and we give presentations about insects and other arthropods and how they impact our lives and what their biodiversity looks like. We also have an insect zoo um, and we have USDA permits to keep exotic insects and to rear them here. So we have about 11 to 12 species of tarantula in our zoo. Um, we have Vietnamese walking sticks, we have um, Australian walking sticks, we've had exotic scarab beetles, we have African assassin bugs, Madagascar hissing cockroaches, and South American cockroaches, giant pepper roaches, and cave roaches. So we have all kinds of things in there. I think it's important to do outreach because insects impact everyone's life. Um, and whether you like it or not, whether you have a garden or whether you have livestock or even pets, it's very important that we can go out in the community and teach kids about the biodiversity, um, not only around them, but around the world to inspire a sense of curiosity um, and interest in the world around us. We have half a million specimens. Uh, our oldest specimens date back to the 1890s, and we have specimens that were collected as recently as even this winter in January and February. Well, our museum is part of a collaborative network of museums across North America that contribute occurrence data um, to a unified database. So the data associated with the specimens in our museum can be found on that database. And we have undergraduate students that are in the process of databasing specimens every day. And by putting our occurrence data on that database, other researchers can search our holdings. They can find out what species we have, how many specimens of each species, and they can also find out where those specimens were collected what time of the year they were out, if they were feeding on anything. Um, so it's a way to enable researchers to find out what we have and to also use our data um, for scientific research. So we have a fancy camera. Um, it is set up to be able to take uh, practically 3D images of specimens. So it's called photo stacking. And so we will set the specimen down in front of the camera and then we can tell the picture um, at what point to start and at what point to end and then the camera will go down and take slices of the specimen at different heights. From there, we can stack all those photos together in um, a program and then edit them in Photoshop. We can do a dorsal image, a lateral image, and a frontal image, so you can really get a good picture of what every side of that specimen looks like. We can send those images to other researchers, so if they're requesting a loan of specimens, um, and but they're like in Europe, and we don't want to spend one specimen all the way over there, we can take high-definition photos and send them to that researcher. And that's not always a substitute if you're doing taxonomic work. It is very useful regardless. So maybe they can just see what they need to see from the photos and they don't need to examine the actual specimen and we can save a lot of money on postage. <laughs> and we can save that specimen from potentially getting damaged or lost. We can also take photos of specimens that homeowners submit um, to their county extension agent. And we can take photos of pest insects so we can show people this is what the pest looks like, this is what a similar lookalike is. So this is what you need to look for. Um, so it's a lot easier than just taking a photo of something on the ground um, where you can't see how you, um, really nice details on that specimen. 